It's First Take on a Wednesday. Good morning. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam in the house. How are we doing, gentlemen? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Fantastic. I cannot compete with that ensemble that you're wearing right now, Stephen G.Q. Smith. I'm out. I give up. It's yours. Well, I deeply appreciate those very, very kind words, but I would like to point out that, in my opinion, um, I'm usually dressed better than you, Skip. Oh, well, that, I see, I give admit. you a compliment, and you even shove the compliment in my face. Touche. <laughs> Off to the shot, well, I must it? admit, you have you have been looking you have been looking quite dapper oh, okay. lately. You yeah, have yeah, upgraded yeah, yeah. your oh. wardrobe and the, the pocket square. square. Oh. You have down pat now. No. I am pleased. It was I am pleased. Right where it I is now. I'm but we, but we, but we okay. always we, we all know there's one GQ in the crew. We we do know that. Oh. We do know. Yeah, that. and her name's Molly Karam. All yes. right, let's work. No Steph Curry, no problem for the defending champs. I kid everybody. The Warriors outscored the Blazers by 20 points in the final 9 minutes of the game for a comeback win in game 2 last night. Golden State is now 5 and 0 at home this season without Curry. Stephen A, were you more impressed with the Warriors or unimpressed with the Blazers last night? Well, listen, I was, I, uh, let me say this. I was more impressed with the, the Portland Trail Blazers. I'm not going to say I was completely unimpressed uh, with the Golden State Warriors. They are playing without their superstar yet. Klay Thompson continues to step up when it counts. Iguodala stepped up when it counted. Draymond Green just continues to do his thing. He deserves a lot of credit. Their depth, their willingness to play together, their unselfishness is admirable. But I was impressed with, with, the, with the Portland Trail Blazers and how they battled because we know they're overmatched. Even without Steph Curry, they're relatively overmatched. It's pretty much about Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum and not much else or so we thought. But when you look at, at, look, at, look, look, at look, look at Lillard, he had about 25. You look at McCollum, he had about 22. Amino, uh, he showed up and was playing particularly early. You just look at the other guys, like a Henderson as well, Gerald Henderson, who used to be in Charlotte's now in Portland. He tries to give you something. They were up by 17 at one point. They were up by 11 they entering the fourth quarter. Uh, Portland just gives you the impression that they do all that they can do, and they're battling. They're scrappy. They've got young athletes. Uh, they're not fearful of anybody. So. I give them credit where credit is due and would say to you that they uh, they have been uh, somewhat, they were somewhat impressive in game two last night. But in the end, what it comes down to is that you got to look at the Golden State Warriors and give them their props too. They underwhelm you at times, but when it counts most, they somehow, some way seem to step up, whether or not Steph Curry is on the court. And I give them a lot of credit for that because a lot of teams can't do that without their superstar. But they're clearly doing it, and they deserve some credit for that as well. Okay, before I get to my bottom line, I, may, I must pay my respects to these Stephless Golden State Warriors. Stephen A. Smith, they're down 11 going into the fourth quarter. Largest deficit they'd faced all year at home. Previously, they'd faced deficits at home in the regular season of 9, 8, and 7. And, of course, they'd made up all three and won all three of those games. And they proceeded to do just the same again. And I am sorry to say, I stayed up to watch the whole thing because I thought we were about to have a series, at least a series that was going to force the hand of the Golden State Warriors to play Steph Curry in a game three at Portland. And I watched 34 to 12 Golden State in the fourth quarter. I'm gonna repeat, 34 to 12 was the score in the fourth quarter. And that was a, a moment where I sat back with about a minute left in the game, Stephen A, and I thought, you know what? I think my Spurs and those Thunders are battling their guts out for the right to finish second in the West, for the right to, fit, to, to lose to Golden State in the conference finals. That's how impressive that squad was last night without Steph Curry. I've said before on the show, I didn't think that squad could have even made the playoffs this year in the West without Steph the whole year. I'm going to back off that. After what I saw last night, that was highly impressive. And I must throw this in. After you disrespected my school, Vanderbilt University, and its lack, you said, of basketball tradition, I just want to point out that there's this guy on Golden State named Festus Ezeli who played at my school, Vanderbilt, my alma mater. And 
He obviously missed 31 straight games late in the year off knee surgery, got punked on April the 1st, April Fool's Day, and then last night returned to punk the Portland Trailblazers in the fourth quarter. Festus Azili last night had played four minutes until the fourth quarter. He played almost nine minutes, went four for four in the fourth with four, I'm sorry, five rebounds and a big emotional game-changing block of Plumlee. And Steve Kerr raved about I watched the post game on TNT. Steve Kerr just raised, raved and raved about Festus Azili. So now I'm back to my bottom line. I was so disappointed in Damian Lillard last night. And I realize what you point out is right. If you look at the total box score, it's impressive. But the total box score is what it was after three quarters. After three quarters, let me get my one through three box here. Damian Lillard had made six out of nine three-point shots. He'd made eight of 17 shots. He'd scored 25 points through three quarters. Then when the money was on the table in the fourth, when it was time to make this a series for Portland, their best player, disappeared. In the fourth quarter, Damian Lillard was 0 for 3, 0 for 2 from 3. He had a, one rebound, he had one assist, and he scored zero points. That won't get it done. And I'm constantly a little bit disappointed by Damian Lillard. He's got all kinds of national TV commercials. We know that. Dropping dimes, dropping dimes, it's sensational. I, I can't see it enough. He, he's a talented rapper, is Damian Lillard. I, I think he's got a career in that, if he so chooses, see his Adidas commercial. He's done them for Foot Locker, he's done them for NBA Store, he's all over national TV. But he did not make this year's All-Star team, and he did not show up as an All-Star in the fourth quarter with the series on the line last night at Golden State. He, he's capable, as we well know, of going off for 51 points coming out of the All-Star break at home against Golden State. And he's highly capable of going 0 for 3 in a fourth quarter. Rise, fall, roller coaster ride. I just don't see enough consistency from Damian Lillard to say he's a star in this league. He has star qualities to him. He has star games. And, and then he has average games. And it's just disappointing to me because that was his game, his deal to close last night. And he, he had an 11-point lead going to the fourth quarter and came up empty. And they came up empty. And this series is over because of that. Could have been at least interesting if Damian Lillard had showed up last night. Well, first of all, I think that, you know, you, you're right if all you're going off of is the fourth quarter of last night's game because he was scoreless. Uh, he was neutralized. There's no doubt about that, and you can't deny that. But Damian Lillard is a 6'2 guard. They list him at 6'3. He's not 6'3. He's 6'2, more, more closer to 6'2 as far as I'm concerned, if that, number one. Number two, when he gets going, that stroke of his, um, he, you know, he can really, really get it going, as Golden State can attest to with the 51 points that he dropped on them in one contest. Has 38 in another, but you also have to take into account, Skip, something that you 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 may you may ignore when you think about Damian Lillard. You could sit there and say, if you got the talent, you got to find a way to get it done. On a night in night out basis, sometimes you're not going to be able to do it if you are a shooter slash scorer, and people are looking for you to shoot the rock, and you've got to go against guys four, five, six, seven inches taller than you. Whether it's a Clay Thompson one minute, uh, you know, uh, an Iguodala the next, a uh, Harrison Barnes the next, a uh, Sean Livingston who's six eight, at, at you know, uh, you know, somebody like that, you have to take into consideration that that height combined with that athleticism combined with the quickness that Golden State has on defense, it's problematic for a scorer. Now, you'll look at a Lillard and you'll comp compare him to somebody like CP3. Well, CP3 is a multifaceted weapon because not only can he score shooting from the perimeter, he can also score getting to the basket, but more importantly, as a defender against him, your eye, you're keeping your eyes on who is he looking to feed? Because his primary gift is that of a facilitator. And so because of that, when you look at it from that perspective, it puts him at somewhat of a disadvantage if you're Lillard because everyone knows you're looking to score. And because you're looking to score, they're going to be up in your face preventing the scoring option that you are as opposed to wondering what you're going to do and potentially playing off of you. These are the kind of things I think you have to take into consideration. Again, it might be what's holding him off from being 
seen as that all-star compared to the Steph Curry's, the Russell Westbrook, the Chris Paul's of the world. That is fair, but it ain't like the brother can't play. He can play. He can be a big-time player at times, but he's primarily a scorer, and he's a miniature one at that. And because he's miniature, going up against this Golden State squad, it's a little bit different. I hear you. He, he can be a big-time scorer, and you added at times. At times, he, there, there's no doubt about that. And I, I'm not trying to be too negative here. I'm just trying to put it in perspective, may, maybe in fair and, and, and the, the, the correct perspective. On Damian Lillard, he's just overhyped. People get carried away with the 51-point games. He, he's not capable of sustaining that for all the reasons you just gave. In the end, He's a little bit of an undersized jump shooter, mostly a three-point shooter. In the end, that's, that's who he is. He's not the greatest distributor. He's not the greatest driver of the basketball. He doesn't have that many moves to get to the basket. He, he doesn't have, you, you know, he, he's a poor man, Steph Curry, because really all he has is just the, the three-point jump shot. And he needs it to be fairly open, and he needs well, to get hot. He, if, he, if he has a hot hand, as he did through three quarters, you, you can be in big trouble. I've seen him shoot the Spurs well, out well, of the gym before. But again, the point that I'm making, Skip, is that everybody ain't Golden State. You got to remember, Golden State has length at practically every position. Their undersized guy is a Steph Curry, who, by the way, is not just 6'3". He's a lanky 6'3". Long arms, etc. So when you look at it from that perspective, and then you think about Iguodala, who's legitimately six seven, and you think about a Harrison Barnes, who's legitimately six seven, six eight, and you think about a Sean Livingston, who's six eight, tinkering towards six nine, and you look at a Clay Thompson, who's your off guard, but he's six seven and can defend three different positions. You have length everywhere, and so because you have length everywhere, combined with speed, combined with athleticism, combined with the fact that you've got big boys like. Bogut and Azili capable of rebounding a basketball and everybody sprinting because they have so many shooters that are out on the court at the same time. Those present big time problems for a guy like a Damian Lillard. And I'm saying to you that you're right in terms of what you're pointing out if you're talking about him going up against Golden State. But most teams in the league don't form the formidable opposition that the Golden State Warriors form. They are a very unique crew and that's what makes him special if he's going up against san antonio he has to be primarily concerned with danny green or Kawhi leonard that's what you have to be concerned about if you're damian lillard if you're going up against golden state you got about five or six dudes you've got to be concerned about so in the big picture i look at his playoff record damian lillard it's 10 and 14 it's okay he hasn't had all that much help he did make a huge game six shot, two, remember, two playoffs ago to beat the Rockets, to oust them in Portland. Big bomb of a three-point shot. I give him all that, but in the end, is he that guy? What, did, did he have that takeover of Gene last night where he just said, this game no. belongs to me? No. I just don't think he does, and it's okay. It, I, I'm not being completely negative. I'm just trying to put it in some perspective. That series ended last night in the fourth quarter 34-12. to 12. And what it showed was that, that Golden State, listen, I, I'm starting to wonder, even without Steph, I think they could give San Antonio or Oklahoma City a run for their money without Steph Curry. That's, that's how good they looked in the fourth quarter last night. I got you. He's very good, high second-tier player, but in terms of first-tier superstar player, no, because he's still let relatively limited due to his size and his game. He is a shooter. He is a scorer. He's not the ultimate facilitator like a Chris Paul, and that's what would serve as an impediment to his greatness. It's that simple. Game three is Saturday at 8.30 Eastern. When we come back here on First Take, we're going to go to the Eastern Conference semis. The Heat steal game one in Toronto. So how concerned should the Cavs be about a possible future matchup with Miami in the Eastern Conference semifinals? That is next. I like this song.